Good day, mates. Another day on the road via my commute. Today we're talking about preparedness. Man, I've recorded this like 50 times because I suck at this. Um, but I'll try. Bear with me. This is unedited, unfiltered. I don't know if you guys saw my YouTube video of me sipping coffee. I thought that was funny. Supposedly everybody thinks it's a, uh, a signal to the auxiliary forces to initiate. It's not. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know how that can be misconstrued. It's just me drinking coffee, man. I like coffee and I like to sip it slow. I want to talk about preparedness because a lot of people don't have a frame of reference for what, what that even means. So let me explain why I got into the preparedness game and the survival game. And then for those who are, who are maybe going to check out right now, let me finish it off by giving you some good pro tips and how to be better prepared. When I started Philcraft, I did so in Pakistan as a contractor. I wasn't, I wasn't bored, but I, I wasn't fulfilled. Uh, there was a lot of cool things that I did as a contractor, but I wasn't fulfilled in my purpose. And I, I wanted to help people. I mean, in business, if you don't do a business that's trying to solve a problem, it's probably the wrong business anyway. But I like solving problems, especially problems that I think are uh, life-saving problems. Meaning if I can give information, if I give training, if I can do something to benefit somebody's life and even save their life, wow, that's a, that's a really cool purpose to live. So when I looked at preparedness and I looked at survival, I realized nobody really understood what it really meant. Operators every single night in combat go out and they crush bad guys. And so when I looked at that, I went, well, why is that the case? Is it because they're elite? Because they're physically fit? Because they can shoot, move, communicate? Because they're part of a huge organization that has multiple levels of support? It's all of those things. It's very comprehensive. It's not any one thing that's specific. It's not the selection process. It's not the weapon system. It's not the level of fitness. What it is, is this conglomerate of all these things, which more importantly, don't have to do with technical skill sets. Let me give you an example. When I worked for a really elite counterterrorism unit, I was pulling security once and I was using my infrared laser with night vision and I was scanning around, looking for bad guys in the shadows of darkness. And I realized I didn't even have to do that really because the aircraft above me had a FLIR sensor that could see heat and things that I couldn't perceive with my own really weak eyes. I mean, compared to a, a pod that has a whole bunch of capability. Now, did I stop pulling security? No, absolutely not. But what I realized for the first time in operating with so much support is it was the conglomerate of all these good people that made the unit operate really well and increased our survivability. A lot of people think being a special operator in special operations is the most dangerous job in the world. No, it's not. I mean, statistically, it's not. I mean, it, you're more likely to kill, get killed in a free fall accident than you are in combat as an operator in special operations. You're more likely to get killed on an oil rig than you are as an operator uh, in elite special operations units. It's because of all those things that I mentioned. So what I realized in stepping into civilian life, even as a contractor where I was going, doing the job and coming back to kind of this semblance of a civilian life, is civilians had no idea how to be prepared. They didn't even know the start point. Like, how do you start to be prepared as a civilian? Do you go to Boy Scouts? Do you become an Eagle Scout? Um, do you go to your local community center? Do you take a tactical course? Do you take a med course? Well, there's not one university or um, ideology and, and even in culture on how to wrap your brain around that complex problem because it's not your one second sub second draw uh, from EDC it's more than that it's the planning processes it's the way that you look at mitigating risk situational awareness mindset fitness health and wellness I mean the list goes on so I wanted to create a understanding of this and I also wanted to create a culture. Um, even though people affiliate us with cults, man, that's weird. Um, 
we are creating a culture of like-minded people who are more interested in being prepared. And so that's not just tactical. So when I got asked a question yesterday, it blew my mind about uh, the perception of what preparedness is. And, and the guy, it was a good, great podcast. It was a great experience. But the question was framed around what preparedness wasn't. And, and let me cr- let, bear with me. I know this is kind of like super uh, philosophical, but bear with me. As a sniper, I had a specific job. Um, and many people think they know what snipers do. I live that life, sniper qualified, sniper team sergeant, charge of snipers. I, I just was immersed in that life. Well, if you told somebody that you were a sniper, they immediately thought, oh, you shoot guns, you shoot long guns. Carlos Hatchcock, um, John Plaster, all these guys, I'm, hell, Mark Wahlberg and Shooter. There's a lot of ways that we look at information and then we immediately stereotype. But the actual job of being a sniper, shooting is probably one one hundredth of the job. Observation, communication, reconnaissance, photo reconnaissance, technical reconnaissance, the list goes on. Low vis reconnaissance. Um, there's so many more layers. So when somebody looks at preparedness, they think, oh, prepper, oh, technical stuff, oh, narrow pass. But it's not that. Because statistically, if you want to survive, and we're looking at survivability of human beings, not just in gunfights, not just in, in mass shootings, not just in uh, accidents, but we're looking at the problem set holistically. How do you survive just generally speaking in life? I mean, the, the leading cause of death is cardiovascular disease. Why? Because we're an obese society. 70% of people are overweight, 40 plus percent are, are obese. So yeah, we have problems. That's the start point. So when I was in special operations and I lived that life, um, I was living a life of preparedness. So, sorry, long story short, longer story shorter, I, I wanted to make that culture in civilian life. And that's what we did. So what we're doing is things that are different. If you came to my course and you took a technical gunfighter pistol carbine course with my guys, you would go, hey, um, real cool technical course, fundamentals. Maybe you're not uh, overwhelmed. Maybe you're underwhelmed. And you go, whoa, I thought I was going to do something high speed. But in special operations, there is no high speed. There's only a very clear understanding of how to master the basics and executing that on a grand scale, committing time and effort. The greatest thing that we're going to do in 2021, I think, is going to be this tactical form or open form concept. I hate the people who speak from platforms and they say, this is the end all be all solution. There's never such a thing. Yes, there's science, but even science is often debunked because we innovate that space. Tactics is exactly that because we're creating tactics to counter human behavior. And guess what? Humans are complicated. Humors, hum, human beings do weird stuff. And so it changes rapidly. Not adapting and not developing your tactics will lead to you being killed. That's, that's a huge problem in law enforcement, military, and even civilian understanding. An open forum and tactics for discussion is the only way to create an understanding of how shit works. One reason I started this, that I'm starting it in 2021, is I asked a question in in a uh, everyday carry concealed course that I wrote. And I said, hey, what's your criteria? Specifically you, what's your criteria to use deadly force? And nobody knew the answer to that. I mean, it was, yeah, the legal jargon and, you know, I, I, I do X, Y, Z because that's what the concealed carry jargon says. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, inside of your head and maybe even heart, have you decided what your decision is going to be to take a human life? What is your criteria? What's the switch that you're willing to commit to? And often there's not an answer there. And often it's a passive answer. Like, well, I think I would, no, 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 definitively, what would you do? Well, I most certainly probably, I don't know, no, not probably. Like, if I gave you this scenario and this specific thing, what would you do? Because if you don't know definitively exactly what you're going to do, then you're likely to hesitate. Then you're likely not to train that shooting solution, and then you fail. So, again, 
the conversation is the start point. Yeah, technical training and operating the right habit and script is very important. But again, it's one one thousandth of the problem set. Mitigating risk, situation awareness, mindset, your health and wellness, asking good questions. What does this look like for 2021? It looks like a group in an open forum of flushing out ideas about tactics. Because somebody in the room might have a better idea or better understanding. It's me curating and moderating the discussion because I am a subject matter expert and then I could conclusively probably source the best or most optimized solution. But the conversation has to be had. I want to grow as an instructor, as a person, as somebody who runs a company, and I want my clientele, I want my customers, I want my culture, my community to grow as well. That's how we grow. It's not a one-way conversation dictating the tactics, it's conversing. And this isn't just tactics. This is like that Brian Enos approach. It's that yin-yang theory of, man, we just need to have the conversation. We could do survival, tactics, worst case scenarios, med, every potential scenario that we could run through, and that's gonna benefit us. That's what survival is. That's, that's how you become immersed in the lifestyle that should be uh, preparedness. Man, that's some deep shit, man. Hopefully you held on. Hopefully I didn't lose you with the philosophical Frederick Nietzsche rants. I love this stuff. You couldn't tell already. I love it. I'm on my way to American Contingency to do a webinar. And I'm going to talk about this stuff. And I'm excited about waking up every day and shining maybe some light in people's eyes and realizing they could be better prepared. You don't have to overwhelm your life. You don't have to disrupt your life. You just have to be thinking about it. And then if you're up to it, uh, executing and um, injecting things into your life that are going to facilitate your survival. I mean, if you plan for that worst case scenario, if you if you take it seriously, then conveniently, it typically fits into recreation, adventure, all these cool things we enjoy, and also covers down on everything in between, between that best case and that worst case. All right, guys, have a good day. Peace out.